You know, just about everyone gets a headache from time to time, but my next guest suffers from them so badly that she often loses her vision and ends up in the emergency room. If that isn't bad enough, she also feels terrible about neglecting her family when she's sick. Take a look. So now I'm progressing through the migraine. What did I do wrong today? I've been suffering from excruciating migraines most of my life. At the onset, I will start seeing flashing lights, like little UFOs, and then I lose my peripheral vision. I normally put a freezer pack on my head. It kind of distracts me from the pain. I drop everything to help her. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. My migraines are so debilitating. I sometimes have to crawl back and forth between my bedroom and my bathroom because the pain is so extreme. My migraines have gotten so bad that I've wished I could just go to sleep and not wake up. Well, joining me also is our very good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So welcome. Thanks. Glad you're here. <laughs> Lisa and Manuel are also here. I appreciate you guys being here. So Lisa, what is the worst thing about your migraines? What sticks out and is most debilitating for you? It's the tremendous guilt that I feel from having migraines. I feel like I haven't been the wife and mother that I should be or that I could be. And I feel like I've drained our family financially from this condition. So you're more concerned not about what's happening to you physically, but the impact on your family. That's really interesting. And you've been living with this for 20 years. Are you aware that she feels this badly about it? Yes, I do, Dr. Phil. How does it affect the family? What's it do to you? I just feel um, uh, that we, we just can't make plans to go anywhere because we don't know when we're going to wind up in the ER. Uh, we, I feel like we're prisoners in our own home at times. Dr. Frieda, tell us about migraines. Well, we should start by saying a migraine isn't just a bad headache. Migraines are, are a neurologic condition. We think related to or possibly related to vascular and chemical changes in the brain. Migraines can cause this intense, throbbing, pulsating sensation in the head, and importantly, can be accompanied by nausea and vomiting and an extreme sensitivity to light and to sound. It shouldn't be too hard to understand that 90% of people who suffer with migraines say that they cannot perform normally or function normally during one of these attacks. So how long does it typically last? They can last for hours and sometimes days. And it's important to know that between these attacks, the pain and these other symptoms actually go away. Now, your three children are also suffering from migraines. Do you worry that they're headed down the same path of intensity, frequency that, that you're experiencing? Yes, Dr. Phil, that's my worst nightmare, is that my kids suffer like I do, and there's nothing I can do for them. It runs in our family. We have a family history of migraines. So how strong is the genetic component here? So it is true that about 90% of people who um, experience migraines have a family history of migraines. However, we, it really appears that it's a combination or that genetics and the environment both play a really important role. All right, now you talked a minute ago about what's associated with a migraine, but let's talk about what triggers it, what causes migraines. Yeah, it isn't totally understood, but we know that there are a number of triggers. And important to know is that triggers may be different from person to person, but also may be different in the same person from time to time. So what are some of these triggers? And it's a long list. Hormonal changes, particularly in women, can be associated with this. Common things like foods and different beverages, certain medications can be associated uh, with triggering migraines. Intense sound, bright lights, unusual smells, um, changes in sleep pattern, and even changes in physical activity. Another important trigger is stress and anxiety. Throw some guilt in there, and it's easy to see how you can begin this vicious cycle that's very hard to break. Yeah, it's like a dog chasing its tail. Exactly. So what do you recommend for people to manage to deal with these things? What can they do about it? 
So managing um, migraines is like managing any chronic illness, and that means that occasionally you have to press pause and go for a reevaluation to develop an updated treatment plan because things change. And one of the important things to do is to keep a diary. Um, simple as that sounds, right? Is to keep a diary because then you know when the headaches come, um, how they feel, uh, what may have triggered them. Diary is critical because you pick up a pattern you just you think you don't. It might not be there, but you see it with a diary. Exactly. And also to get help from friends and family to add things in that you may not see yourself. There is a great link on gethealthystayhealthy.com to a, a migraine diary. Talk about that a little bit. We're hoping that this is a helpful tool to put all of this information in so that you're ready to take it into your healthcare team and get started on this new plan. We've also um, added a feature or an opportunity to sign up for the Get Healthy, Stay Healthy newsletter. Um, in that, you'll also get some helpful tips about managing uh, migraines, but also managing other conditions. Yeah, look, this is all great information, and I really wish the best for you, but start this diary, absolutely. And if you guys at home want to do that, do it. There is power in understanding the patterns. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially uh, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall.